Fun fact, the Arizona desert at sunset, the day after a thunderstorm, is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. And it's so beautiful that I thought now is a good day to leave the house that looks like I hunt people for sport and instead go out into the desert where I definitely hunt people for sport. And speaking of hunting people for sport, by the way, we're talking about Malachi Corley today. That was a really shitty transition, Brett. Uh, do something better. Look, I can't think of anything else, okay? My point is, we're talking about what Corley does well. We're going to talk about a bit of what he doesn't do as well, or at least what he didn't show as much on tape, just because of the type of offense he was in. We're going to talk about projected roles, and of course, I will give out a player comp for somebody he reminds me of in the league that isn't Debo Samuel, because everybody's going to compare him to Debo, and I have a different name that I think should be considered. He's a really good player, a really fun player, somebody that isn't talked about as much, but we're talking about him today. So yeah, Malachi Corley. Let's get into it. If you just look at the route tree data from Malachi Corley last year at Western Kentucky, it's pretty easy to see how he was used for the most part. A combined total of over 60% of all routes run were either hitches, slants, crossing routes, flat routes, or screens which is a crazy number to be honest, and his average depth of target of just 6.1 yards past the line of scrimmage reflects that usage. For context, that's lower than the A dot of Bijan Robinson in his last year at Texas, and Bijan's a running back. So again, pretty crazy number. But even with his targets being overwhelmingly short, his yards per reception was still a very healthy 12.2, and even more impressively, his yards after the catch per reception was a ridiculous number at 8.5, which if you need help visualizing that 8.5, that means that every time he caught the ball, it was nearly a full first down just in yards after the catch. Corley is simply a yak monster, and part of the reason why Western Kentucky didn't feature him down the field as much is simply because they didn't have to. They could just give him the ball on screens or run him on a shallow with clear outs in front of him and say, hey kid, go do what you do best. And it worked. It really, really worked. I mean, he has tremendous short area burst. He's really physical through contact with the ball in his hands. And he's kind of built like a running back at 5'11", 210. So you sort of expect that. And I think at minimum, you can get him on the field as a rookie and just feed him cheap, easy targets that allow him to just attack space and win with his athleticism. But all of that being said, of course, the true question when it comes to Corley's projection is, can he do more than all of that? Is he just an underneath threat that does his damage with Yak, or maybe does his damage out of the backfield? Or can he also stretch the field, make contested catches, and just generally do all the wide receiver type stuff that we talked about a few days ago in the Roma Dunze episode? Is he a gadget player, or is he more than that? And at least for me, my answer to that question is, maybe. I'm not ruling it out that he becomes a true deep threat later in his career, but for now, as a year one projection, I do think there are legitimate concerns about Corley's ability to be a ball winner deep down the field. His contested catch rate last year was 22.2%, which is not good at all, and I wish I could be generous and just say it was all his quarterback's fault for giving him unreasonably poorly placed throws to work with, but it wasn't. Well, let me clarify that statement really quick. Yes, I do acknowledge there were plenty of examples of bad balls being thrown his way that he just honestly had no shot at even trying to win on, and those of course do end up counting as incomplete contested targets, but as I was charting all of those contested targets, I did also find plenty of examples of him just straight up not tracking the ball very well, or just not being able to survive contact at the catch point, so I think the truth is kind of somewhere in the middle. Is he as bad of a contested catcher as that 22% number suggests? No, probably not. But is he even remotely as good in that area as many of the top receivers in this class that are at 45, 55, even over 65% like Adunze is? Also no, Corley's not close to any of those guys. He is just average as a deep threat because of those two traits, or rather, lack of traits. He does not track the ball at an elite level, and he doesn't finish contested catches at an elite level either. It just kinda is what it is at this point. And that doesn't mean that he still can't be a very good player in the league, but I think for him to be a very good player in the league, he has to play a very specific role. Which, of course, brings me to player comp. And for those of you familiar with my past years of prospect evaluations, this one might get a chuckle from you, but I really do think Corley is this year's Rasheed Rice. 
and I mean it in a positive way this time. I have learned from my evaluation of Rice last year where I wasn't a huge fan of his profile because it kind of looked like this one. In fact, I hated that he was a second round pick at the time because a lot of the same things I talked about today with Corley. He had a similarly terrible contested catch rate at SMU, he was an unproven deep threat, and I just didn't really see him becoming a complete player at the next level. But my mistake was that I thought he had to be a complete player at the next level when he didn't. The Chiefs did not use Rice as a downfield threat. That just wasn't a factor in his role at all. I mean, we talked about Corley having a very short depth of target at only 6.1 yards, but on the Chiefs this year, Rice's average depth of target was only 4.9. He literally only had eight targets of 20 plus yards the entire season. That's less than one every two games. And speaking of contested catches, by the way, do you know what Rasheed Rice's contested catch rate was this year? 14%. Rice was way lower than Corley was, but it ended up not really mattering because he was still great in the role that he was asked to play. Rice had a fantastic rookie year because he was still a very dangerous yak threat, and the Chiefs just didn't really make him do the stuff that I was concerned about in the first place because they knew he probably wouldn't be successful in those types of roles. And truly, as an evaluator, I have learned from that. Sometimes if you're really good at one thing and you go to a team that's only going to ask you to do that one thing, you can still be a very good player in the league. And who knows, maybe even win a Super Bowl as a rookie. To me, Malachi Corley is that type of prospect. If your team needs a deep threat, draft somebody else. But if your team needs an explosive, physical, complimentary weapon whose one job is to turn a 5-yard target into a 15-yard game, Corley is the guy you want. He might be a one-trick pony, but I'll tell you what, it is one hell of a trick. Look, before we get out of here, uh, I just want to say one thing. Arizona, take a bow. My God, it is beautiful out here. I might move here. Like, this is ridiculous. Anyway, that'll do it for Malachi Corley. If you're a patron subscriber or patron member, Patreon supporter? Whatever the term is for that. If you're in the dollar tier... Uh, on Patreon, dollar a month. Again, you're going to get access to my position rankings once those are actually done. And if you're in the $5 tier, you get exclusive content, exclusive videos. We're going to have patron-only videos going live every single week leading up to the draft, as well as public videos like this one going live every single week. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. And also, one more note, if you're a fantasy football player and also a draft fiend, and you're paying really close attention to this year's rookie class and you think you have a good handle on this year's rookie class already and you want to draft them right now before everybody else figures out who's actually good, you can do that literally right now, months before the draft. You can draft them in rookie best ball leagues over on Underdog Fantasy. It is live right now. And this time last year, guys like Devon A-Chain, Puka Nakua, CJ Stroud, Sam Laporta, like all the best rookies from this year in the NFL, they either weren't being drafted at all or they were going in like the last round. So now is obviously a time to draft rookies at a value. If you want to go play rookie best ball, again, live right now over on Underdog Fantasy, use the QR code that's on the screen right now. You can use the link in the description, however you want to get there. Uh, wow, the sun is going down very quickly. Uh, but anyway, again, QR code, link in the description, promo code Brett, they will match your deposit up to $100. So whatever you put in, they will double it, and you also get access to a Pick'em Special as a new depositor, which this time of year is generally going to be NBA-focused because the football season is over. So thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this week's show, or today's show, and pretty much all of draft season. Um, now that the sun is going down very rapidly, the temperature is dropping very rapidly, maybe I won't move here. It's very fucking cold right now. Uh, I'm going to go inside. I'll see you guys later.